everyone welcome to Kelly's creative dream studios and it is Wednesday and I'm gonna start playing things a little differently at least for this month where on Wednesday we are going to talk about our um, color challenge project and at the end of each video I'll be drawing a stick and then Thursday we'll come back and we'll do that project so today I thought I'd talk about a little bit more about the kit that I'm using Yep, I knew. Yep, there it is. Okay, I thought I'd left a piece of paper over on the work table. We're good. Okay, so remember, KCD Septem Sept JJ23. We are going with these four colors. You can pick three out of the four for each project. They don't have to be the same three for every project. You can mix them up and move them around, and you can bring in any other colors as long as your project includes at least three of these. So let's talk about what I'm doing. Okay, uh, this month's journal is by request from Denise, and she had seen me do a flip through on this. I don't remember what I was talking about in a video back in July, I think, June or July, and I showed this, and she was curious about my file folder journal with envelopes. And I explained earlier this week that these envelopes were made just to hold the ephemera that was left over from each week in this color challenge, or in this challenge, that was a collaboration with Dear Julie Julie and Care Brandon Creations. But she got me thinking. So I'm going to be making a file folder journal, and I'm going to be incorporating envelope, junk journal, junk mail envelope pockets on each page. So let's, this is basically what I'm after. I'm going to be doing more sewing on this journal, I hope, it, at least definitely the cover, but I'd also like to stitch the pages as well, so that's something to work on. And I chose to use this uh, paper collection from Stampin' Up! It was from our holiday catalog in 2017, and it incorporated all the colors from the color challenge. Uh, we have early espresso, we have tangerine tango, which is an orange. We have this uh, little lucky line twist, which is a green. We also have a uh, garden green, which is a standard green in here. So <clears throat> this is the paper collection that I'm going to be using. Now, I have all kinds of scraps from that, but I have full pages too. And I've taken one of these sheets, partials, and I've fussy cut out a bunch of these pumpkins. So I have that. I need to sit and fussy cut some more of these uh, sunflowers, but it also has this paper on the background. Maybe it's supposed to go like that, I don't know. But we've got this one, and that one. Then we have this stripe, which has the garden green, the lucky lime, and it has these leaves on the front. So we have those. And then we have, trying to make sure I put those all together. I've got several of each, of most everything, except the sunflower and the pumpkins. Then we have this corn going one direction. And on the back it has the acorns. Then we have this real, it's, I think it's supposed to be like an Indian corn vibe. Um, it's got a real, real geometric computer type thing going on but then when you turn it over you have all of these pumpkins and this is what I've been I've, I said I've supposed to cut several of these out and then we have this one with the wheat sheaves in kind of a bluish black tone and on the back of those is this early espresso brown ziggy zaggy pattern I had bought a couple of packets of these because I knew it was one that I was going to use a lot of. I love this. And this, I haven't decided what is going to be on the inside covers, but it has to be something that I have at least two pages of. And this one, I am lucky enough to do that. I have three of those. So that is the full color shot of the pages that I'm going to be working with. And I'm going to set these back over here with the paper keeper so I don't lose track of them. Then I'm going to be using file folders, and I've got to shift things here just a little bit because I've kind of 
don't want to lose track of everything. And this is, well, there's, we use these ribbons on our tags on Tuesday, yesterday. So I've kept these in here. I've also pulled out coordinating stickles colors. And I moved that tag, or I'd show you that finished tag, but I got that tag done. And added a couple of things to it. So we have this. Um, I'm going to be adding things to this. The little things that I need to keep track of that I'm going to use with this. So I have that ready to set aside and put to use. Now I determined that I wanted my journal to be smaller than the other one. So overall the color cover pattern needs to be a little bit bigger than 7 by 9. So I will take and cut this one down. But I've already cut the five inner pages. Which are file folders like this. And I've got five of those to go on the inside. So this one's going to be the cover. And to do that, I want to keep this in the center. Because you'll see on... Let me move this. <laughs> you'll see on this one that I used the center tab folder for my uh, cover and it let me bring this over to here and have a, a something here I could pull this to. So I want to keep this one here. So what I'm going to do, and I could do this, you know, mathematically and figure out where my center is and all that fun stuff. But I thought the easiest thing to do was put my cheaters on. And I'm not sure that was actually any better. <laughs> but I'm just going to kind of eyeball center that and I can also come in with my centering ruler and do this and kind of figure out where my center is five and a half whoa five and a half five and three quarter center is going to be right about there Right there. And on this one, I had that lined up. Awesome sauce. So that's going to be, I want to take this much off the bottom. And I want to take this much off the top. And actually I need to make that a half inch wider. I need to come back out a little wider on that. So now that I know that, I'm going to come out here. And you know that's what erasers are for, right? Is to mark off your lines. So I'm going to do this. Like this. And I don't have my cheap Fiskars print over here, but I've got my one from Stampin' Up. And we'll see how well it wants to cooperate. Because I want to line it up with this tick mark. That tick mark right there. Okay. And come in here with this one and go to this tick mark. Now I've got it down here at the bottom because um, if I flip it over I won't see my mark. There's my mark. I can't line it up flush up here because of the... I know there's a mark there. There we go. Got a goober on there that's making it hard for me to see that. So let's do that again. I'm not sure where that came from, but it's making it hard for me to see my line. Like I need to clean this with the uh, acetone. There we go. That's better. Okay, so now that we have those out of the way. And I'll have to go back and erase those lines. But I am going to leave this depth. Because I want to keep that spine. And I want to, I want to be able to come back in here with this. And I'm going to score and crease that outside line on the front. Like that. And remember to flip it over and do the back side. And then I'll skip the center line and I'll score on the other outside line 
like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me my gusset. Am I going to have a little bit wide here? I am. But I can always cut this down and create my own um, tab here. But see, then I have about a half inch gusset that will hold these five pages or what will actually be five signatures and their bulk for that. So that's going to be my cover. Now I've already gone through also and I've started putting together tag collections with one of my dies. And let's see, I don't I think I put the die away because I'd already used it, so I put it away out of my way. But it's a Tim Holtz uh, bag and numbers die, and it makes this bag, and then I cut tags to fit. Remember, I'm going to leave the back, the manila plain for journaling, and then I'm going to cover them with the paper. Now, did I think about that I needed to cover them with the paper before I punched the top? Nope, but that's okay. I'll glue everything down. When it's good and dry, I'll come back in with my Stampin' Up! punch and redo it. Not a problem. That'll work just perfect. So I have those, and I did five of those, so there would be one in each in each signature. Now, I also said that we were including envelopes, correct? Well, I have a massive amount of business envelopes down here. And I'm gonna need to either, I'm, I'm not gonna use this big of an envelope. I'm either gonna use ones like this. And actually, the only reason I have these is for the black paper. I'm gonna go through, we're gonna do an envelope video and talk about those. I probably won't use these for the same reason. That's for blues. But I'm looking at using these kind that have the bigger windows. And I will use at least five of those. Now I don't have any with this left open, but I can create those. So if you want to play along, you're going to need six file folders, determine your size, and cut down five of them to fit as signatures on the inside of your larger folder. And you're going to need a collection of junk mail envelopes because I want to use the windows. Now, if you don't want to do windows and you just want to use or you don't have junk mail envelopes, use any envelope you want, but I'm going to be focusing on the windows. But I may go ahead and do one just to show you what you can do if you don't have the window envelopes. Okay, so we will be using those. And I have a massive stack down here. I don't lack for those. So we're good. So I'm going to be using these. So that's our envelopes and our file folders. Pick a paper pattern that you want to work with. Uh, it can be a theme. It doesn't have to be fall or October. You can do anything you want. If there's a journal you've been trying to get to, this might be a neat way to explore a new type of junk journal. Um... Some of the other dies I may use in this is I may try using this one that I got from Maddie. This would make a two signature journal. Um, so I haven't decided quite yet on that one. I may just use this part of the die and cut edges, but I kind of like that. I also have my circle dies. I have tab dies. I have a specimen die. And then I have this one that I bought from Maddie. Um, and these are going to be purely decorative elements in here. I have my whale tail and the three different sizes from Maddie. And I have this one from Graphic 45, which is a file folder. So I could do a file folder within a file folder. Now, isn't that going to be fun? This is Folder and Sentiments Dice. There are 17 pieces to this one. It says 15, number 15, 15 pieces here, and on the back it says 17 pieces. So um, go figure that one out. Somebody can't count. <laughs> but I want to play with this one because it's a file folder inside of a file folder. So pick out your papers. Think about your color scheme and what you want to use. Pull laces, ribbons, 
anything like that that you like to add. If you want to do any fussy cutting from your papers ahead of time, I've also pulled out some Tim Holtz items here that coordinate with what I'm doing in the journal. So we can use those. You go through your stash and see what you have to work with. Okay? Get into your tools. Think about what you haven't played with for a while that it's time you played with. And that's what we're going to play with. Now, last on our list for today is our color stick. And there's a whole mass of them in here. So let's see what our first project is going to be to include in this journal for this month. And I'm just pilfering through. I'm not reading tags. I'm keeping an eye on my cat on the other side of the room to make sure she doesn't try to come help because that's her thing. And I have this one. And it is... We're going to create something using lined journal space. So that's what we're going to be working on tomorrow. So if you have a lined stencil or you have lined paper, get your kit together and come back and we're going to make lined journal space tomorrow. And I'm going to try and switch it up a little bit from other journals, lined journal space things that I've done. So come back and we will play with that tomorrow. In the meantime, remember to like, share, subscribe, and if you know what you're going to be working with, leave in the comments below. Maybe you'll inspire somebody else with your idea of what to do for their journal this month. Creative blessings.